Hi, how are you? This is Sandstorm here, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. As you may know, there is a new DLC, No Step Back, planned for release at an unspecified date and time, which will enrich the Eastern Front and rework the Soviet Union. So I thought in anticipation for this, we would play a game as the Soviet Union today and spread the revolution. Now, there was a five-year anniversary patch released recently, which adds a few more $10 expansions and I believe a new general for the United Kingdom. But most importantly, this adds a new event where Italy can surrender to Ethiopia if Ethiopia takes control of all their East African holdings. This now makes Ethiopia into a viable nation to play. And I did give this a try, but it didn't go very well. So today we'll just be playing game as a Soviet Union in a new 1936 scenario. Let's begin. Now that we've loaded in, let's begin sorting out the Soviet Union. Our first technology is going to be the 1918 weapons and equipment. Soviet Union already has paratroopers researched, which is very handy because, as you know, many Sandstrom tactics include paratroopers. But we'll just do our electronic and industrial focuses so that we can make the Soviet Union into a uh, industrial powerhouse. Speaking of industry, we'll build some military factories in Moscow and then build some civilian factories uh, let's see we have some high infrastructure over here 60 percent the infrastructure isn't great in the Soviet Union but it is fairly decent it's not low enough that we have to work on upgrading the infrastructure though all right let's make sure we start building a lot of infantry equipment uh, and build some artillery as well five factories on that Light tanks, we need to reinforce our current divisions, but I'm not sure how many tank divisions we're going to have to build because we already have 12 or 13, if I can remember correctly, at the start of the game. Same with motorized. I don't know uh, how many factories we're going to need on those right now. Uh, fighters are something we're going to need, so let's put quite a few factories on that and then switch this over to close air support once we unlock that. For now, we'll just delete the production line and focus the factory onto fighters. This should be a pretty good equipment setup for now because it only requires us to import uh, one resource. Uh, let's see, we'll import from Brazil. We'll take a few convoys, but we're not going to import from anyone we're going to plan to go to war with. Our first national focus, we're not going to do the Great Purge like you might usually do. We probably want to wait as long as we can, which is about mid to late 1938, to make sure we don't get a civil war. So I think we'll start by finishing the five-year plan and getting those industrial bonuses, then moving up to the Stalin constitution and getting some political power down this tree. Then we can move down to the PCDI, which gives us some interesting political focuses to annex uh, Baltic nations, Tanatuva, and whatnot. And then we'll probably move over to the Great Purge around that 1938, uh, beginning of 1939, like mentioned earlier. So we have a lot of divisions as the Soviet Union. Let's separate them out. We got 73 infantry along with 18 garrisons. Now this garrison template, it's pretty bad, but it's not as bad as other garrison templates. So they can be used as frontline divisions, especially if we upgrade them a little bit. But otherwise, we have a full army basically of cavalry and quite a few mountaineer divisions. This is our mobile army, and we have 12 tank and motorized divisions. This motorized template isn't very good, and uh, although the tank template is uh, decent, so I think we'll definitely use these on the front line. Let's assign our best commanders. We'll go with uh, Zhukov here, because he is an armor officer. Let's split up this infantry army. It should be three armies plus one extra division. So we'll split out a few divisions to make 24 stacks. We'll make an army group with our best field marshal, Chuchevsky on here. And then we'll take our best defensive generals because our army will be holding the line mostly. For our good infantry, we'll put our better generals on. Then we'll move this over uh, this overflow division into our garrison army which will put a slightly worse commander on since the divisions are slightly worse as of now. And then we'll also put our Mountaineers into this infantry army group 
along with a decent general. And then we'll make a mobile army group with our cavalry and tank and motorized divisions. And now all that's set up, we'll put one of our armies on the Turkish border because as a battle for the Bosporus, the Turkish now get an event that sometimes leads to war when they remilitarize the straits. I'm a bit confused by that event, but I'll explain it once we get to it, which is going to be 70 days or one focus. But we'll set up most of our army along the Polish border, who is going to be our first target. All right, now I think everything is set up. Let's go up to five speed and get going. We now have enough political power to begin our justification on Poland, which we will do as soon as possible. I forgot to mention the Navy and the Air Force. For the Navy, we just created our usual death stack, and we've set all our ships that are not going to complete in 1936 to be deleted, and set all of our dockyards, once they're completed, to go on to the 1936 submarines that will deploy into our death stack. And we've just gathered the Air Force in Moscow, which is our largest airport. And now I believe the focus should be done for Turkey. They did the Montreux Convention. Our focus is done as well. We'll do armament effort, which it gives us, I believe, four more military factories. And Turkey seizes control over the Bosporus. We always want to escalate the situation because we also gain a little war support. And even if they do uh, continue escalating the situation, we will always win the war. And Turkey has compromised. I have not seen them not compromise recently. Back in the early days of the DLC, they it seemed like it was about a 50-50 chance for them to go to war over this, but uh, it seems that it has been changed now, and even though we did not compromise, we still can't move our navy out. And Ethiopia is done. And we'll go for the computing machine. We just completed armament effort. This gave us a load of factories. So we'll move over to the Stalin Constitution, get some political power, and move down to a research slot as soon as possible. And we have some free civilian factories. So we'll keep building some more civilian factories for the time being because we just gained so many military factories through this focus. Uh, we've got one free since we already had some queued up to go out of the infantry equipment. So we'll just assign uh, one more to fighters. And now we're out of rubber, so we'll import some more. Uh, looks like Brazil isn't working, so we're going to have to import from British Malaya instead. They're a little bit more reliable. We just completed the Stalin Constitution, which has opened up this branch here. Now if we go for collectivist propaganda, we get extra stability and more political power, giving us an extra research slot really quickly. Uh, it gives us militarized schools, which gives us a little bit of manpower, and some extra construction speed. The rest of this isn't very good, except for this one gives us a little extra political power and some resource gain. Socialist science gives us a lot more recruitable population, along with an amazing uh, tank genius. This doesn't really matter that much, um, but our research slot does come a little bit later. We are currently doing the Mass Assault Doctrine, and uh, Zhukov will be available as a military high command, which will give us extra army experience and uh, extra research speed on that doctrine. So we're going to go down this route here. Although it doesn't give us the extra political power, we can just get that over here from socialist realism already. So we'll go down this branch instead, and we can assign a few things in our government with the political power we have. We'll go to War Economy, and we'll also go for the Captain of Industry, which will give us extra construction speed. We have some free civilian factories. We'll build a few military factories with that. And we should probably get working our in, on our intelligence agency. We just completed our national focus, positive heroism. We're going to go down to progress cult to get down to our research slot as soon as possible. Now we have some agents with uh, double nationality down here, but uh, none of them are seducers. So we'll go up with the Soviet seducer. 
probably go into the United States for right now. We've just completed our war goal justification on Poland. World tension is low enough they should not get aid from anywhere. We'll put out our navy in the lower Baltic Sea and upper Baltic Sea to see if we can stop Polish trade or whatnot. And activate all loaders. The, uh, the quick army is on aggressive and the infantry is on balanced. We're still in a little bit of a deficit for infantry equipment, but that is very quickly going to go away. By the time we're finished with Poland, I think we should be all done. Let's now declare war on Poland. And we should be able to justify a war goal on Germany and not have Poland join the Allies. Because I believe it needs to be up at 50% tension to uh, for these uh, non-aligned nations to join the allies and we're only at 43% so as long as we finish Poland before any other major world tension happens we should be just about fine so let's unpause and watch the invasion occur oh yes we should probably move our planes we have some decent airports over here just sit over our fighters that should be all we need for now completed our national focus progress cult as I said again we're just gonna continue down through socialist science to our extra research slot I think we were actually able to take out uh, every Polish division during this invasion because our army was just so strong compared to theirs. So let's take the uh, historical claims in the east, annexation of eastern Poland. So we will control all of the Belarusian region and most of Ukraine. I believe this is all we need. Then we can puppet the rest of Poland and give them the German territories they need once we are finished. All right, there we are, we're done. Let's now reorganize our army on the German border and prepare for our war with Germany, see if we can upgrade some of these airports to try and get aero supremacy in the early days of the war. We just completed our national focus, socialist science. We have now arrived at our final research slot. We can now modify our government. So let's assign some of those military high command we unlocked from our focus. The uh, armored genius, which gives a whopping plus 15% for armor division attack and defense, which is going to be groundbreaking for getting through Germany and through other conquests that we may embark upon. We've also completed our doctrine research. We'll go down to mass assault, and I think we can spare the 100 army XP we can recruit an operative. I think we researched... Yes, we did. All right, well then we can recruit in the United Kingdom for now. And we'll start building an intel network in Scotland. We've just completed our national focus extra research slot. I think we're going to go for socialist realism, which will give us some extra political power, but this aviation cult is going to be handy to have when we upgrade our aircraft to 1940s models. I'm also going to start producing a transport plane for future pair drops. And we get the event. Shanghai Shek arrested in Shanxi. Okay, if we kill him, they can't do the Chinese United Front, which sometimes means China joins the Allies and things go rather janky. So we're not going to uh, kill him because China will declare war on communist China. We could invite them into the faction and then go to war with China, but I don't think that's going to be necessary at the moment. So we're, we're going to say he is still needed for now. And we'll get to war with the Allies on our own very shortly. 
We've just gained our war goal on Germany, so we're going to declare war right now. We're also going to call Poland into arms so we can start attacking as soon as possible. Now, next thing we're going to do is justify a war goal on Romania, which is slightly longer, but that just gives us more time to take out Germany. So we'll justify on Bessarabia, which will get us uh, called into a war against Czechoslovakia and France who may join the Allies by the time this war goal is finished justifying but that's no problem we'll just get to take out the United Kingdom as well and if we had arrested or if we had killed instead of arrested Shanghai Shek then China would have joined the Allies and become a major meaning we'd have to rely on Japan to take them out so this is probably the best course of action but for now, let's just focus on our war with Germany. Let's do a little micromanagement to see if we can get this done as soon as possible. Italy also joined the faction, but that should be no problem. Once we take out France, we'll get a doorway into Italy. We've just completed our national focus, socialist realism. We could move industry to the Urals since we're at war, but I don't think that's really anything we need to do at the moment. What we should do is improve railway network to get us down to the PCDI and the anti-fascist and capitalist diplomacy focuses. It seems that these divisions are encircled but they still have 13 supply. Alright, we've completed our national focus transpolar flights. We're gonna go on to an ocean going navy. Build some more civilian factories. And assign our mass assault expert. Now there's an issue here where circle divisions have loads of supply so what we're gonna have to do is tag over to Italy and just disband them uh, because this is really a bug that I'm really hoping is gonna get fixed. I'm not even sure why they have supply. From They're apparently getting supply from local but this is a Polish core state it's not a core of Germany or anyone and it doesn't have a victory point inside it so this is really is really a glitch so I'm just gonna manually fix that it looks as if the Italians are leaving the front line because they're trying to run a naval invasion which might be the perfect opportunity for us to push the front alright the Italians have left the front let's try another push our justification on Romania is complete of course they're guaranteed by everyone so if we need to bypass this front Czechoslovakia is going to join the Allies. So if we need a second window into Germany, we can try and go through Czechoslovakia. We just completed our national focus, Ocean Going Navy. Let's go down to found the PCDI. The fall of Berlin has just occurred. It seems that these uh, naval invasions are taking the Italians off the front line. There are a lot of them, though, and I think they put their whole army there. So when Germany capitulates, that should be the Italian army done for. Alright, our war goal on Romania is going to expire soon, so I'm going to withdraw two armies from Germany, which I hope we will capitulate soon so that we can deal with all these naval invasions. Alright, it is now time to declare war on Romania. Okay, we're getting pushed. Romania join the Axis? Okay. That is unexpected. Uh, I guess they would rather not be part of the Allies. Czechoslovakia is at war with Poland. Now that is an issue because I was not expecting that. Why are they at war with Poland? Are they also in the Axis? Why did nobody join the Allies? Okay, we should do a speed cap of Germany. And then see if we can... Okay, uh, Czechoslovakia contained. Paradrop France and then get into the United Kingdom. France isn't in the war? Alright, hopefully France gets called into the war. But, uh, because they're going to be the easiest to take out. But for some reason, people are joining the Axis, and this is, uh, this is quite strange. And France has been called in. Alright, perfect. Okay, Czechoslovakia joined the Allies. Still not uh, sure why they're at war with the 
Polish People's Republic. All right, it's, I guess it's best if we're always justifying a war goal. So we'll start justification on Austria to see if that'll help us get through into Italy. Uh, I'll also try and deploy our transport plane down somewhere once we capitulate Germany. I'm hoping we're going to get to take occupation of that airport so that we can pair drop France as soon as possible. Thankfully, Germany has not given military access to the Allies, so we should be able to capitulate them very shortly. Let's make a new template of paratroopers. Duplicate. And just remove one of the battalions. That should allow us to change more divisions into paratroopers as long as we change our mountaineers over because they contribute to that cap as well. All right, let's uh, make eight paratrooper units and we'll set them down to that German airport where we usually pair drop from. Hopefully that'll allow us to take France. With a fall of horse. There's still no air up in Western Germany. So if we capture one of these airports, we might be able to pair drop France. We've now set up at the airport and we have prepared the pair drop. Let's activate the orders and capitulate France. And thankfully, France has capitulated. There's only one little encirclement where I think the United Kingdom is. So let's link up our territories uh, with our German occupation zone and see if we can take out these United Kingdom units that we might be able to encircle inside of occupied Germany. If we can capitulate Germany, that'd be great. We just completed our focus to found the PCDI. Let's go for anti-fascist diplomacy. Oh my goodness. Yes. Germany has just capitulated and liberated a good part of Poland, which was about to capitulate. It was quite close. Um, we've almost capitulated Czechoslovakia. We just have a few more victory points we need to take. And the only two majors we have to defeat now is the UK and Italy. And I believe the UK has a lot of their troops elsewhere. So we're going to try and invade the British Isles as soon as possible. And then I think the war should be over for the Allies. We can use our Austrian justification to get through to Italy if we need to, since they're pretty well entrenched here right now. But it shouldn't be too much of an issue if we have our entire army focused on them. And Czechoslovakia has capitulated, and that is perfect. I prepared our army for an invasion of the United Kingdom. We've got our paratroopers set to go in. And this is perfect timing because the United Kingdom has just staged a naval invasion of northern France. So let's wait a few days for them to funnel as many troops as they can into this naval invasion. And hopefully there will be none left in the mainland. All right, let's begin the invasion. And as soon as we've captured this port, we'll delete our fallback line and move our troops in. We've just taken London. We got the fall of London event, and we got another doctrine. We use the uh, we have plenty of army XP right now. Actually, we're at our cap and some military factories. We're still a bit behind on infantry equipment. Quite a bit behind, but it was a bit of an issue in the beginning because we were only able to take Dover. So we had some supply issues, but now we've taken London. We are on green supply. And we're on yellow air. Alright, our justification on Austria is just completed. They don't have troops on every tile, so I think we should be able to get them in the peace deal if we march into one of these open tiles. Uh, I'm hoping they'll join the Allies. France has nearly decapitulated, so I'm trying to get back to Paris. But the UK is about to fall. If we don't do Austria right now, they're probably going to get guaranteed by the uh, Dominions once they take over the Allies. So let's see what we can do. Alright, the United Kingdom has just capitulated. And I just realized I forgot to declare war on Austria. So we're gonna have to deal with them next part. So, this should mean we get a peace conference. Alright, perfect. We got United Kingdom, France, and Czechoslovakia. Sadly, no dominions, but we'll deal with them next time. So, let's satellite as many things as we can. 
create some unions with uh, with people and spread the revolution like we were trying to initially. Satellite. Alright, we're not going to satellite Wales and Scotland because they can remain part of the United Kingdom as our puppet. So let's end the turn here. Okay, now we'll satellite British Raj and British Malaya. And let's see what states are left. We have Malta. Okay, Malta is here. Can we satellite Malta? Yes, we can. And let's satellite Malta. We have Gibraltar. That is a strategic place which we will take ourselves. We'll take Northern Ireland, so hopefully we can release it to an Irish puppet later. Scottish Highlands, all this is part of Britain. We have Hong Kong, we'll take that ourselves. Falkland Islands, we'll take all these little islands ourselves. If they can't be satellited into a puppet. Newfoundland, we will take and release to Canada, along with Labrador. This is in the UK. This... Yes, we'll take this and release it to Yemen later. Bermuda, we'll take that directly. And the rest of these little islands all around. Alright, let's end the turn. And now let's puppet the United Kingdom directly. And that's it with the United Kingdom. Let's do the same thing with France. Now we can't satellite Kurdistan. We did do that last video, so we may as well. Alright, we satellited all the colonies, I think. All we can satellite is French mainland area. We could satellite Corsica. Alright, let's do that. we can satellite is just inside France itself. So let's once again take all the island provinces. We will give French India to the British Raj puppet. Let's see if I can find it in the list. This is a very long list. Make sure that the Raj remains united and we'll take Kerguelen along with the Chinese port. St. Pierre and Miquelon will also be taken and return to Canada. Savoy and Picardy, I believe. Yes, those are uh, all mainland provinces left over. Now let's pass a bit. And we'll puppet France proper. France has been puppeted, now it's just Czechoslovakia. We'll take Carpathian Ruthenia to unite into Ukraine. And we'll puppet the rest. Very good, we're done. Oh my goodness. Alright, the game is running a little bit jankily right now. And it has been uh, quite a while to record this, even though we've only gotten until uh, late 38. Speaking of which, we need to start the Great Purge as soon as possible. Hopefully we won't get the Civil War. But our war with Italy is nearly over. So we're going to have to leave it here today. Next episode we'll take over Italy. Hopefully Austria will join the Axis if we declare war on them. But the Allies do still exist. We are not at war with them. I'm just hoping Austria is not going to join them when we don't want them to. So I hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.